hello everyone this is mcmook sent medical lectures and i'll be showing you how to answer the clock questions and on the omr sheets so basically we've started the clock series with we're done with the physiology aspects for the premium students we are done with that and they've been following all through so here's how to answer on the omr sheets correctly first of all the omr means optical mark recognition that is what omr means and means uh on these sheets when you answer your questions and you submit to the clock exam board the insert it in the machine and this machine actually picks out the shaded parts of your answer to give the results rather at the end and why is this important it is important because after the whole series of studies and you've understood to some extent or to some level how to answer these core questions and then you are filled with knowledge but at the same time you make some silly mistakes on answering on the omr sheets then you find some situations where you see um results are withheld or you find that your you don't have a result at all so uh, what this what this video is all about is to show you how to answer correctly so you don't make mistakes so the first I have here is what you have to use a black ballpoint pen and this is what we call a black point pen what you have here on these pictures on this picture rather there are different types but all it means is that the pen has to be black so that when you shade the color will appear very neatly and then the machine will pick out your option very well and the second it has to be a ball inside the pen there so that when, you, when you're shading, it doesn't cause problems on your paper, on your answer sheets. So that's why it is advice. However, if you use any pen, not likely to be disqualified, but to um, prevent some unfortunate circumstances, this is what you try to do. So the first thing here is what you write your name and student ID provided to you by your school. That's the student ID will be provided to you by your institution and some institutions actually, they provide those information already on the answer sheet. So by the time you get to the exam hall, you have been given the answer sheet itself. The third number here will have is circle and write your question paper variant. Everybody, although we are having, you are going to be having the same examination, but each candidate has his own variant so that the next person sitting close to you will not have the same variant with you. Now, why this is done by the clock exam board is because they don't want uh, a situation while where you have to where you can find yourself cheating and getting answers from your neighbors although you have the same set of questions the questions are 150 in total for crop all the nine subjects included but then for the variant you can have up to six variants variant one to six and then for the first variant the person with the first variant question paper might the question number one might be on microbiology and the person having variant two might have question one as pathophysiology and a variant three might be on on micro on pharmacology rather and so also and this are just shuffle but it's the same 150 questions you all are going to be answering on the exam day but just that these questions are shuffled this is just a way for a way of reducing a uh, my practice or cheating whatsoever and then number four when cycling on the boxes it should be fully done and from outside to inside. I will show you in a short while how to do all these things on the actual OMR sheets. And then also you have to fill in your bio data, which is necessary. And then on the answer section itself, where you have to pick out your answers, you will cycle each alphabet fully and not partially. I'll also show you that briefly. And then when you skip a question, you make sure that subsequent answers correspond to their question. I will explain that to you. And then the last one, do not cycle multiple answers on the question. So um, we're done with the first point. And then the second point, as I said, you should write your name and student ID, which will be provided to you by your school. So here is the typical OMR sheet. First of all, before I continue, I would like to give credit to Dr. Faraz, where I got this OMR sheet sample from. So the student ID can be anything and, okay, let me see. What you have here on these boxes are one, two, three. You have zero, one, 
one, two, three, four, five, down to nine. That's what you have on these boxes. So this is how you feel. If, for example, your student ID is what is um is two eight nine six three seven four six six. So when you feel the first number you have here is two, so you trace down here on two. I remember what I said about feeling from outside to inside. So you go down this way, you shade it properly and carefully. You don't need to rush. Don't worry, they'll give you time to fill in all this before you start your exam. The time is not part of the exam. And then the next box you have eight, so you trace eight down. You also shade it correctly from outside to inside. Like this. You have nine. The same thing. You have six. You have three. You have seven there. You have four. You have six. You have six. So this is what putting in the student ID is all about. So also here on this part, on the second part where you have um, surname. So it's just your surname that's been required, which will be, um, it could be anything. So let's assume the surname is Croc. This way. You can see on the vertical, you have alphabets all from A, B, C, D, and down to the last. So you just follow the same method you use for the student ID. You shade it from outside to inside. You start with K here. You have R. Fully shaded, remember I told you that. We have O. And then you have K. So basically, this is how you fill in your information on concerning your ID and your Sony. Um, why you shade from outside to inside is for technicality, so you don't make mistakes. If you shade from outside, from inside, sorry, going outside, you might find yourself going to the next alphabet this way, or maybe something like this, and you're trying to go out and then you just extend out. So in trying to avoid that, you just start from outside. You've traced the outside and then you continue inside, 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 and then that will help you to reduce Attendance of shading outside. So that's just for technicality. Remember, you're using a pen and nobody will give you an extra sheet or nobody will have to correct you. The machine itself will pick all this information and anything that is wrong, they can decide to hold withhold your answer, your exams, I mean. So on this other part of the answer sheet, we have exam. Your test center will also give you the exam itself. The test can be any number, it can be can be zero, three, and then you have the exam itself, which can be uh, given as a number, maybe four, one. University and school also have its own number, three alphabets, three digits, sorry. So let's say zero, zero, one, and then the variance. The variance now is what I talked about concerning your question paper. So your variance, you won't answer, you won't fill this yet until I give you your question paper. When I give you a question paper, you see the variance written on the question paper, and that's what you will fill in here. So if your variance is 0, 8, that is variance number 8, you fill in at 0, 8, and then you trace it down as usual, like we've done before. 0, 3 here. We have 3. We have 4, 1. We have 
dot zero zero one. Remember, you do everything carefully. You don't need to rush. The exam center will give you the timing for all this before you start your exam. So this is not part of your two hours, 30 minutes. And then you have 08 here, lastly. 08. That's variant number eight. It might be written just eight on your question paper, but because the box provides two space for two alphabets, you add in zero in front and then you put in zero one or zero two or zero three down to zero nine, whichever case it may be. So this is how you also fill it. Now there's additional information also. The school provide that they will tell you what to fill in there. Your faculty, whatever name your school is using as the faculty, faculty of clinical medicine or faculty of basic clinical medicine. Basic, and just say basic medicine. And then the name of your university. Chief National University, for example. And then the date of the exam you put in there. For this year is almost likely 29, so we have some time and 30th. 29, that's June. The year is 2023, exam title crop one. Your surname again, your name and surname. Let's see, the surname, your name is exams, for example. And then your surname is crop. And then you sign here. This is where you put your signature. Make sure it doesn't cross to the next, to the other box. So you put in, make sure the signature goes in inside. So that's your signature. I can see here it is written example of the correct answer notation. This is it fully shaded. So it has to be fully shaded for the exam to pick out that that is an answer being shaded. So now we are done currently with this part of filling the information on biodata. So let's see what we'll have here with you. Like I said, number two, write name, student ID provided to you by your school, circle, we've done that, circle and write your question paper variants, we've done that. When circling the boxes, it should be fully and from outside to inside. I've shown you that. And I also fill in your biodata, which I've done that. Now on the answer sheets, on the answer section rather, where you're supposed to provide your answers. You also have to be very careful there. You have to circle each alphabet answer fully, what I've explained above and I've shown you also. And then secondly, when you skip a question, you make sure the subsequent answers correspond to their questions. Now, this is what I mean. You've started your question, you've started answering your questions and then question one, you've known your answer, you've selected your answer as B. So this is how you mark it fully from outside. This is it. Question two, your answer is C. The same thing. Then question three, maybe you don't know the answer yet or you need time to think, so you have to skip. Now, when you skip, when you go to question four and then you know the, the answer to question four, maybe your answer is E. Don't shade question four, answer on three here. Just be careful, take note of that. So by the time you shade question four answer here, you notice that the remaining options, by the time you continue, question five answer will be on the four, question six will be on five, question seven, and subsequently down to 120, 150 rather. Even if you are very good, you are the best student in your school and all of that, but because of this silly mistake, you find out that you've lost so many marks. And then at the end of it all, when the crop result comes out, you see something like, 3% pass on your answer or 10% and all of that. You start wondering what happened. Yes, you can apply for remarking all of that, but by the time you check and see that it is your fault, you have no choice but to receipt the exam. So you have to be careful about that. That's why I had to bring that up. It's not just about studying and knowing the subjects well, but you also have to know how to answer this. That's why for those students who are the premium students, I have actually involve them in this and by the time we continue with our weekly assessments and tests we're going to use this actual sheet 
so that you start practicing from now and then by the time you get to the exam situation itself you know what to do you're already used to it this is what you've been doing would we'll practice it for all the nine crop subjects and then you perfect it so you don't make mistakes because there's what we call exam tension and even anxiety you know it all but then because you are faced in an exam situation you begin to sweat you begin to have dry mouth you begin to have racing heartbeat and all of those things so these are just typical and then the next question since you are skipping number three make sure the number four question is answer which is e you follow it on e and circle it completely now another thing is that do not this should be the last point yes do not circle multiple answers on a question the optical machine will only pick one option per question one option per question so if you read your when you read your question then you maybe you are lost you are thinking about two questions at the same time two answers right at the same time then you are confused which one to pick if you do something like this and this two options on one question the machine will mark this as wrong completely even if the answer is supposed to be a but then because you've added another option there it will mark the whole of that option as wrong and also if you do something like this or you just tick like this or you just tick like this or you do something just whatever the case is the instruction is that it has to be fully circled so all of this the machine will not pick and then you won't have the scores for those answers for those questions so you just have to be careful this is more about technicality composure and discipline forget it's an exam situation yes but so many people have undergone through this process they've passed they've passed the crop too also and then they are not practicing doctors so you won't be the first person you won't be the last definitely the exam will come to pass so these are just a few things i wanted to let you guys know and um, i hope this helps thank you very much